Well, uh, here's a political hot potato, certainly a very current one. Does leveling up make sense? Uh, leveling up? What, what is that? Well, it seems to mean um, halting the decline of communities that have suffered from uh, loss of employment and, and a declining urban amenity. <laughs> The idea is that people in communities that feel they've been left behind get a chance to catch up. The uh, Tory government seems committed to addressing this question, or at least it, it says it is committed to do, doing so. Uh, the Prime Minister at the recent uh, Tory party conference said, uh, quote, we have one of the most imbalanced societies and top-sided economies. Uh, the Queen's speech uh, said the government would, quote, level up opportunities across all parts of the United Kingdom. That's, that's a big statement. Uh, the promise of leveling up uh, also seems to have contributed to the uh, Tory uh, by-election victory in Hartlepool. So it's, it's, it's current and it's seen as a, a powerful vote-getter. Some say it's the righting of a long-standing wrong, while others are skeptical and believe it is nothing more than just idle electoral promises. <laughs> let's look at both sides. First of all, let's look at those who say, yes, it does. It does make sense. Well, to begin with, it must make sense given the commitment that the government is making. I mean, it's laying out uh, a, uh, a statement of intent that uh, it's going to be, be held to. Boris's statement is that, quote, for too many people, geography turns out to be destiny. That, that, that's quite an admission. Others say that we owe something to the industrial north. It made us rich through the sweat of its collective brow. Uh, now that much of that has moved away, we must lend a helping hand. It's a moral obligation. It's almost a little bit like uh, paying uh, reparations for slavery. Uh, we would also say too many big spin projects have been in the South. We need our share. And I suppose overall, as a democracy, we, we believe in fair play and equal opportunity for all. What, what better way than to embark upon a major restoration of equality than a program of this sort? Well, what about those who say, no, it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense? Uh, what, what do they say? Well, first of all, they would say that leveling up is a, it's a basic fallacy. Uh, the fallacy is that there is a clear-cut cure for financial and economic underperformance, and that's simply spending public money. Well, it isn't. Uh, life doesn't work that way. Uh, Jesus explained all of, all, all of this to us, even in the Gospel according to Matthew. Here's what he said. Uh, for whosoever hath... To him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Now, that may sound brutal, but that's just the way the world works, so get over it. <laughs> uh, the fuzziness and even the implausibility of this whole idea is gradually becoming clear. Exactly what it is, uh, how it is to be implemented, how its success is to be measured, all this is still undefined nearly two years into this administration. It was a, it was a, a promise at the outset, and they just, just don't seem to have been able to come to grips with it. Deep down, they all know it's a hollow idea. So they're promising us a, a, a paper on this uh, in January. Well, <laughs> we'll see. Well, okay, what, what is my take on all of this? Um, well, sorry, I'm afraid it's all vote-pandering nonsense. Uh, London is the, go the goose that lays the golden egg. It always will be. That's why its productivity is measured by GDP, gross domestic product. GDP per capita is far above that of any other area in the country, and it'll be that way for the foreseeable future. Uh, experience tells us that successful businesses prefer to locate where they can have access to shared infrastructure, to a large pool of highly skilled workers, and similar businesses with which to share ideas and innovate. Places like London will continue to totally dominate the economy. You, you, you can't artificially change that. Uh, and by the way, the EU uh, has operated a leveling up 
uh, policy, uh, they called it uh, regional aid, and it just didn't work. Uh, the less productive countries in the south of Europe have fallen further and further behind, amassing more and more debt, mostly at the expense of northern countries, which provide the funding for it, and they're starting to get pretty impatient about that. Uh, the EU government processes, as well as the disastrous euro, make this state of affairs perpetual un until, of course, the euro is abandoned. And when that happens, uh, there'll be hell to pay, believe me. <laughs> the truth is that this imbalance, both in Europe and here in Britain, will always be there. No amount of vote-pandering promises of new railroad tracks and the like are going to change it. Well, there it is now. I'm sure I will get some pushback from some of you on that one, but uh, that's what I think, and I think the arguments uh, in favor of my position are, are pretty solid. So if you liked it, give me a like, uh, uh, and do all the other things, uh, comment, uh, subscribe, uh, notify, and so forth, and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs>